So leave me at the altar. God is working it out. He's not through with us as yet. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. As we say this morning, they open full time this morning. Praise the Lord. All places are open. But we are here all the time. We're going to give God praise. Because we always come in God's house to give him praise. For he is worthy. Turn with me to Mark chapter 4. Please, I decided to glue this morning on me. The devil is a liar. We're going to read from verse 1 to 23. Praise the Lord. And he began again to teach by the seaside. And there was gathered unto him a great multitude, so that he entered into the ship and sat in the sea. And the whole multitude was by the sea on the land. And he taught them many things by parables, and said unto them in this doctrine, Hark and behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass, as he saw, some fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured up. And some fell on stony ground, where it had not much earth, and immediately it sprang up, because it had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, it was parched, and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up, and choked it, and it yielded no fruit. And other fell on good ground, and it did yield fruit, that sprang up, and increased, and brought forth some thirty, and some sixty, and some an hundred. And he said unto them, He that had ears to hear, let him hear. And when he was alone, that they were about him with the twelve, asked of him the parable. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. But unto them that are without, all, all these things are done in parable. And seeing they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then will ye know all parables? The sower soweth the word. The word. Say the word. The word. And these are they by the wayside when the word is sown. But when they were heard, Satan cometh immediately and taken away the word that was sown in their hearts. And these are they likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a little, for a time afterwards. When affliction and persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they were offended. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as heard the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things, entering in. Choke the world, and it becometh unfruitful. And these are they which are sown in good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some a hundred. And he said unto them, is a, is a candle brought to be put under a bush or under a bed, and not to be set on a candlestick? For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret, but that it should come abroad. Verse 23 and last, if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. We are end of the scripture reading and we say, Amen. Praise be to God. Which soil are you? That's a topic I decided to give this morning. Which soil are you? The sower went out to sow seeds. But as Jesus always liked to give parables, but when he's with the disciples, he explained it to them what the seed, the soil, the seed really meant. So this morning, this afternoon, I'm going to ask you to search yourself. See which soil are you? Are you just the, 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 seed, the seed that fell just 
on the good soil? Are you the one that fell among thorns? Are you the one that just fell and sprang up and when the sun came up, it just, it just withered away? Which soil are you today? Which soil are you? And if, you know, we all, as we always say, there's always room for improvement. There's always room for improvement, no matter what it is. There's always room for improvement. Look at pastor. He was a pastor. Well, he still improved. He's going to get the diploma in this. And, you know, there's always room for improvement. So if you know that, you know, you're, you're on a good soil, but you're still not doing all the things, there's room for improvement. Just do it. Just do it. If there you room, fell on the thorns, where the thorns come up and choke you. And we know what choking is like. We know what choking is like. Have anybody ever choked you? And sometimes we say we got dream that, you know, we felt something choking us at night where you can't breathe. And if you are torn like that, then you need to get up. You need to get up and get those, get, get that from around your neck and start breathing properly. Start breathing the word of God. Start praying. Start seeking his face. Release yourself. As we always say, we always when we go back to the cross. You always have to go back to the cross. If the thorn, if you're going from a thorn and thorn is choking you, you need to go back to the cross to get released, to be free. And that you can find yourself on the good soil where there is fruits. Where you go and spread the word. Where people are coming in. Where people are being saved. Where there is testimony of healing, of deliverance. You know, one time I, I heard a scripture, uh, a pastor was preaching on it. pastor said that, he was having a, con uh, a concert under a tent and he was preaching the word and a young man drove up on a bike with his girlfriend and he came up and while he was preaching the word he kept, you know, inviting people to come to Christ as a savior and he made a step forward but the young lady started telling him things and he went backward and the word he kept coming again and he made a step forward again and the young lady said what she had to say to him and he went backward again I think this was done three times and instead of him listening to the word, he started listening to the lady again. And he went backward again. And this time he drove on the bike and he drove off. And the off that he drove, he went straight under a truck. And under the truck he went, he died. He was mashed up. But the young lady was still alive. She was saved. Now at the funeral, she had time to repent. He didn't. There's no repentance in the grave. She had time to repent. He didn't know. She was the one stopping him from moving forward. And he listened to that. Now he's dead. And she still have time to repent. So if you know. That you know. That someone in your path. Is trying to pull you backwards. And you decided to go with them. You need to let go. And we say shake the devil off. We need to be shaken off. Shake it off. Shake the devil off. And keep moving forward. If he didn't make that step forward. He would have been alive. He would have been, you have a repentance and then, you know, you never know where he would have been. He would have been the next minister, the next pastor, the next evangelist. But he listened to that other voice. We say this voice of God makes a difference. That voice that was making a difference to him when he made that step forward. It didn't make any sense to him. He took, he took the other path and ended up under that truck, mashed up like nothing else. You know, if we find ourselves let me go back to let me go back to verse 15 and he said and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown but when they have heard Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their heart now the word has been told you are here, you are in a crusade, wherever you are and the word has been spoken but you are there, you are there but you are still not there have anybody ever told you that? that you are there but you are still not there because you are not listening you're far away, you're, you're distance away. So the word can't find any part to punch in at the time. It can't manifest itself inside of you. So you're there standing. The crusade is finished and you go home like nothing. You went home like nothing. The word that was sown did not find anything inside of you. Verse 16 says, And these are they likewise which are sown on stony grounds, who when they have heard the word immediately receive it with gladness. Now, I was just telling you a story. That man, I believe, was receiving the word with a bit of gladness because he made a step forward. He made a step forward. He did not stay like those before. He made a step forward. But he was distracted. A step forward, but he went backward. 
as we always say sometimes, we are in life and we make like 50 steps forward and then 100 backwards. So there's no improvement. There's no improvement. There's no improvement there. If you make 50 backwards and 100 forward, then you know something is happening there. Verse 17 say, and have no root in themselves and, no, and so endure, but for a time for afterwards, when affliction and persecution arise for the world, say immediately they were offended. Now the world still haven't gone far enough to manifest. So every little thing offended you. Every little thing offended you. Even in the church, you come into the church and somebody says something as soon as they mash your toe. You ready for high fall? I would say high fall back in my country, say high fall. Ready to turn them over. You are so easily offended. That means the world still have way to go to manifest itself into you. So somebody can mash you and you can just say, it's okay, and let it pass. Humble. Be humble. Verse 18. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things enter in. Choke the world, and it becomes unfruitful. Choke the world, and it becomes unfruitful. God have blessed you, hear the word, you accept it, you baptize, but still yet, you haven't reached anywhere as yet. Because the lust of the world, you have a car, you have a house, you start worshipping them. These things take, take, take God's place in your life. Your friends take God's place in your life. Wherever you go, it just, it just take over your life. You come to church, like you're going right back to square one. The lust of the world, the things of the world. That's why I don't make the things of the world bothers me, you know. They don't bother me at all. The lust of the world, sometimes, you know, some people start something and they prayed, they have God, oh, they are all excited, they are, they are Holy Ghost filled and everything like that. But when you see money start coming, people start coming, friends start coming. You know, everything that you never think of imagining start coming. You forgot where you came from. You forgot where you came from. You went back right down there, you forgot who blessed you that much. You even stopped turning your tithes and your offering. Anybody call to you from the church is like they never existed in before. You forgot where you were. The lust of the world, the things of this world take you over. You want the biggest thing in life. These things attract you more than the word of God. These things attract you more than being in the house of God. You want to walk from Sunday to Sunday. Don't have time to pick up your Bible. You go to your Bible full of dust. You have to dust it off every time you go to it because it takes so long for you to get into it. The lust of this world take you over. And it's happening. It is happening. Don't make the lust of the world. Don't make the things of this world. I know we are God's children, you know. And we are supposed to have the best. But when we have the best, remember the blesser. Remember he's the one who bless us with these things. Continue to worship him. Continue to praise him. No matter where you go, continue to invite him in everything that you do. Don't forget about him. Because he hasn't forgot about you. He has not and he will not forget about us. We are his children, no matter what wrong we have done, no matter how far you think you have gone in life, he can bring you out. Are we sing the chorus that said, Chow the lifeline, Chow the lifeline, someone is thinking. Chow the lifeline, someone needs Jesus, someone needs you, Lord. Do not make the lust, the things of this world, turn you upside down. That you cannot remember where God has brought you from. You can't remember your brothers and sisters. You can't remember that you have enough to feed someone, to bless someone, and you kept it all for yourself. God is not like that. God is not pleased with that. He's not pleased with that. The things of the world turn us about so bad, upside down, inside out. And I've seen it. I'm living around people who, who this have taken over. They find all faults. Everything is a fault. Everything. They have so much excuses. Because their eyes have been blind. Take the fold off. Take the fold off. You know, this morning, I, 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 even though before, when I, my pastor told me that, you know, I was going to be ministering, I said, God, let me just see you and not the people. Let me just see you, Lord. Just pour on the sing song before pouring the oil. I was singing for myself. Pour in your word into me. 
pour your anointing upon me so that I can say what you want me to say. That some lives will be touched today. Someone who feels like giving up will have hope that the world will manifest in someone today. That you will not leave the same way you came in. And those who are listening, whatever you are, wherever you are, that you will not give up. No, it's not time to give up. No, it's time to hold on. No, it's time to have hope. No, it's time to have faith and to put your faith to work. Because faith without work is dead. No, it's time to do that. Don't let the things of this world take you over. You can have your vehicle. You can have your house. I know of someone who have a house and you always say God has blessed them with it and they're going to bless others in it. And we always say that house is the house of God where prayers will go from morning till morning. Nobody stop anyone. You want to join in, you just join in. Because when the Holy Ghost starts at the top, you come right down to the basement. And everybody got to join in. And that place is such a peace. A peace that passes all the sun is just there. So don't make the things of the world just take you over. Verse 20 says, And these are they which are sown in good ground, such as hear the word. The word. The word. The word that has been spoken night and day. We hear the word many a times, you know. Sometimes we say, Oh, I heard a word already. I heard that topic already. I heard that message already. But still, are you taking heed of the word? Are you listening to the word that is saying, that has been spoken? Are you? The word, the word, the word. The sower sowed the word. The pastor sowed the word. The evangelist sowed the word. The minister sowed the word. But still yet, are you taking heed of the word that has been spoken? Are we taking heed of the word? Children of God, take heed of the word. Don't just let it fall. Take hold of it. Let it manifest in you. Live the life pleasing unto the world. Live. Live for Jesus as we sing of them. Live for Jesus. Live a life pleasing unto God. We may go through things in life. We may go through hardship. We do. We feel like giving up. I do sometimes. But I cry out to God. I cry out to Him because I know with Him all things are possible. I know he doesn't talk back to me as I want as somebody else next to me will do. But I know he answers prayer. I know he does. But not in my timing. Because I will be, I will be crying out my eyes out at that time. But you know what he's saying? That is not your time to get that answer yet. But your answer is coming. You just have to have faith. And hold on. Hold on a little longer. How many times do you want to let go? Hold on a little longer. Take Jesus at his word. If you don't take him at his word, you're going to fail. You're going to fall. Take him at his word. And he's going to carry you through, right through. To the promised land. Right through. Remember the children of Israel? He take them right through. Not anyone to let them away. the boats to go over. But they went over on dry land. They went over on dry land. He's going to take you right through. You see, look at the birds in the air. I feed them. They eat. Who are we that you're going to provide for us? Who are we? Why are you taking God for granted? Why? His word is his word. He said he will never leave us nor forsake us. During your child's time, with the footprint in the sand, when you look back, and you feel disappointed. You say, God, you promise to be with me. You start quoting the scripture. You promise to never leave me. You promise to lift me up. But I'm not only here. I'm all alone. I'm all alone. But then you hear that still voice whisper. My child, you are not alone. You see those footprints that you see. They are not yours. They are mine. And I'm carrying you. I'm carrying you through. I'm carrying you through. Say, I am going through with Jesus. I am going through. He's carrying us through. So you're not alone. You are not alone. Start over verse 20 again and said, And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word, and receive it, and bring forth fruit, some thirtyfold, some sixty, and some hundred. 
And he said unto them, Is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed, and not to be set on a candlestick? The good fruit. The good fruit, you go, you minister the word to people. Try your best living the life that God wants you to live. You minister his word. You pray, you fast, and you take it in. You don't just do it because they want to do it and as a joke. Or somebody tell you want to do it. You have to do it. Know why you're doing it for yourself. As I say, you got to know God for yourself. I could only tell you what I've experienced. I could tell you the goodness of God. I could tell you I read that he went to the cross. I could tell you that he died for you and for me. And they nail the nails in his hand. They persecute him. Not for himself, but for you and me. I could tell you all that. But you got to know him for yourself. You got to go to the cross and see him up there. With all the blood running down his face. Not for himself, but for you and I. Our sins. He bore the pain for you and I on that cross. Go to the cross for yourself. Come and taste and see that God is good. I know he's good. I've tasted him. And I want you to taste him also. Read his words. Understand if you don't. Ask. Ask him for wisdom as Solomon did. Understand and to go with your people. Because trust me, it's not easy to go with his people. It's not easy to go with the people around us. We got to ask him day and night. For fit, patient, understanding, wisdom, knowledge. To go with his people. Because these same people are the people that are going to pull you down without even thinking. Right to the ground, even trample on you like nothing. So, we gotta ask him for these things to go with his people because his people are not easy to go with, and we all knew that. Everywhere you turn, somebody is trying your faith, somebody wants you to lose patience. So, you gotta grab hold of him when these things are coming your way. As that see that fell on the good soil, the word. When things are not going your way and somebody try to come and, you know, you say provoke into anger, just remember the word. Just remember where you're standing. We said you got to be rooted and grounded in him. Just remember where you're standing. Just remember, you see, this is hurricane season back in the Caribbean. And when the wind blow, it blows the roof, it blows the wind. They take anything you want to take. But when you're rooted and grounded in Christ, nothing going to move you. Nothing gonna move you. You may be shaken. We all get shaken a little at times, but you will not be moved because we are rooted and grounded. So I spend a lot of my days tracing things of this world. I never realize it will never fill my soul. When you go all about lusting over the things of the world and they expect them to fill you, you know, fill you know many people who are rich and they are miserable. They are rich and unhappy. Because they are missing something. They are missing someone to be a part of their life. So when you think that you have it all because you have those, you're not. You can have, you can take all those enough. But give me Jesus. Because see, once I have him, I have everything. Because he is my provider. He is my healer. He is my deliverer. He is my all in all. He woke me up this morning and sent me on my way. I was clothed in righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is my all in all. Some say I want a little bit of Jesus. I don't want a little bit of him. I want all of him. I'm going to be greedy on that. Sorry. I'm going to be greedy. I want all of him. But there are much to share, you know. Because he can share for every one of us. Every one of us. You remember the woman with the issue of blood? She just touched him of his garment. And his whole body was there still exposed. So everybody could touch anywhere else and be healed also. So there is much of him that we can have. But we have to have faith. The good soil. The good soil manifests in us. The word. Preach the word. Say, preach the word in season, out of season. Some of us wait until crucifixion time to preach that he was nailed to the cross. If he wasn't nailed to the cross, he wouldn't have been here today. So preach it all the time. He was born as a baby in a manger by a virgin. 
You preach it only on Christmas, I will celebrate Christmas. Preach it any time! Because without, <laughs> without him being born, we will not have him to die on the cross. He will not die. He will not risen and gone to be a place for us to come again. You see how much he loves us? Despite all the things that we are doing to him, despite how many times we nail him every day, every day with our sins, we nail him back to the cross. He said, I've gone to be a place for you and to come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there he may be also. There he may be also. He wants us to be with him. Do you understand what he's saying? No matter what you're doing, he wants us to be with him. Despite of what we have done or what we are doing. As some of us still have things, you know, that we're going to still do something because of what? We say, oh, God will forgive us. Oh, Father, God will forgive you and you will forgive me also. Yet he still loves us unconditionally. And I always, when I see things going on around me, I always say, if God is not like man, a lot of us would have perished. But I give God thanks that he's not like man. He's not like man. So the things that we look and hold in our, in our mind for someone, and years and years going to keep reminding us, remind us that you've done something wrong. Oh, you remember when I did that? I want to hurt you all over again. But when they remind you of your past, Remind them of your future with God. Amen. Because you're not the same person than you were before. All things are passed away. And all things are become new. I'm a brand new creature. Amen. I'm not the same person. And you didn't want to know me back then when I was that person. Amen. You didn't want to know me back then. So where I am, I know I have a long way to go. But I'll give God thanks for who I am today. I give God thanks for the change in my life. Because you were not want to know me then at that time. And provoke me, by the way. You provoke me, you do not want that. Verse, 21, verse 22 says, And these are the things hid which shall not be manifest, neither was anything kept secret, but that I should come aboard. If any man here have ears to hear, let him hear. Have you heard anything I just said? If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. We say, this is the light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. The little light. The light in you that you must make shine. I don't mean the, the, the candle that you light and you have it in your bathroom or anything like that. I'm talking about your life for Christ. The light that is in you that must shine out. Not just over you, but inside. You know, some people look at people and they see their outside appearance and they say you look good. They look at you and they look at your outside appearance and say, oh, I don't like you. But God looks at the heart of men. Thank God for that. He looks at the humility of men inside. What you cannot see, God sees. But I think we can't see it now. We just get to know the person. Get to know the person and the, the personality of who they are. And you can see that they have a good heart or not. God sees the heart of us who wants to serve him. Those that fell on the good soil. He wants us to go out in the world. Preach the word. In season and out of season. Bringing in the lost. Bringing in the lost sheep. Bring them in from the fields of sin. And when you cannot reach there because of what's going on right now, what the enemy is trying to put up for us not to go and minister the word to others, we got to get them on our knees. Get to the altar. And say, leave me at the altar. When is it time to go? I remember last Wednesday I was coming to prayer meeting and I didn't know who was coming. But my head was just bursting. My head, you know, I my back of my neck was just, like my head was going to split. I, I was scared that if my head going to explode on me. I said, rain was coming, but I was going to church. I said, if it's me alone, I'm going to the altar because I have to talk to my God. I got to talk with him. I could talk to him at home, but I know it was prayer meeting and someone will show up. And I said, I'm coming. And I got on that bus. By the way, my time of determin my determination was high up and I was going. I don't know where the pain went to. That's how good God is. And he was just trying to just stop me from coming because it was raining. So people wanted to wait, they went back in, they go back to the bed and sleep. But no matter where it is, I'm coming. When there is prayer meeting, I'm going to come. Because I want to talk to my God, not with myself, but my brothers and sisters who are here with me on that day. 
Because you see, unity is strength. Iron sharpened iron. You may say something on that at that moment that's gonna lift up somebody. That's gonna lift me up. I may say something that's gonna lift you up also. Because maybe you were thinking before something completely different. But that word, that word, the word that the soul was sowing, the word, the word, when I read and I hear the word, I keep repeating it, the word that fell on good soil. Those who want to walk with Christ, those who want to talk with Him, don't you want to let Him know that God, I am your own, and I'm going to hold on no matter what comes on me, I'm going to hold on. Never let go. But also ask him to hold you because at times we slip. At times we kind of try to pull him out, pull out his, our hands out of his own. So let him hold us in the palm of his hand. Let him embrace us. Let us be the good soul today. And if you are not, search yourself. Someone says, Search me, O oh Lord, and know my heart. See if there is any wicked ways in me. See this one of the soul that I am on and change my life, Lord. I want to be on the good soil. I want to be the word that is speak. The soul and the good word that is spoken. Someone take heed. Someone heard the word and run with it because they needed it at that time. Someone out there need to hear the word. The sower sowed the good seed. And it sprang up, bear fruit. You know, sometimes we plant, sometimes we plant things in our backyard. Tomatoes, sometimes the birds are, are the squirrel, they come and they eat them up. But when we plant something and it goes down deep in the soil, and it starts to sprang, and you get food that you can share for your neighbors or friends. Lots of tomatoes and cucumbers, that good fruit. And that, they, they taste so good. So when you sprung up and people see the change in you, they see your life turn around, they and all want to ask, isn't that the person that was that the last week was doing this or saying that? But you hear the word and you run with it and you make a change in your life. You let that word manifest in you so much that you make a change. You turn around. God turned your life around. But you got to be determined. You got to be determined. The person who planted those fruits in the bed, those, those vegetables in the backyard, they determined for them to grow. They water them. They water these fruits and they grow. If squirrels are coming, coming around, they put things in, 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 in place that the squirrel will not get to eat them down. Or the worms or whatever, they put things in place for them. So they grow and they bear lots of fruits. Are you willing to grow for Christ? Are you willing to grow for him and bear fruits? Bring somebody to him. Even if it's one soul, even if it's one soul, you're going to bring to him. Are you willing to grow and bear fruits for Christ today? Are you willing? Ask yourself that question. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? Search yourself and see which fruit are you, which, which soil are you. See which soil are you today? But if you have soil that fell on, and the thorn choke you, don't give up. Don't give up. There is room for improvement. Don't give up. Call upon the maker, the creator of heaven and earth, the one who hears, the one who sees, the one who understands. Even if you have to cry your tears, call upon him because tears are a language that he understands. He knows your needs, but tell it to him. As I heard someone say, tell it to Jesus. Tell it to Jesus. Are you weary? Are you heavy laden? Tell it to Jesus. Tell it to him because he understands. He knows. He sees children of God and he understands. And I'm urging you today, be the good soil that manifests fruits. Be the good soil wherever you are listening to me from. Be the good soul today. Talk to someone about this word. Don't be selfish and keep the word for yourself. Talk to someone about his word. Reach out to someone today. Just like how we sing the song, reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. When you're passing, when he's passing by, you want to reach out to him. You want to touch him. 
You want to grab hold of him because you want him for yourself. You know what he can do? Spread the word. Spread the word. Spread the tidings all around. Let someone know that he's alive. He's no longer in the grave. My God is alive and well. He's no longer in the grave. The stone is rolled back. The tomb is empty. He's gone. And you know where he's gone? To prepare that place, that paradise. That paradise place for us. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart things. And lean not on your own. Your own understanding. Don't make the things of this world get hold of you. That you forgot where you come from. If you feel that you're choking from the vine. The things around you. Get rid of them. Get rid of them. Start fasting. Start praying. Start seeking. And if you feel you can't do it on your own. On counts, call someone. Call a partner to pray with you. Because we need strength. And if it's all the time that we need strength to endure right now is now. We need strength. When you look around that's what is going on. You can get weak by the minute. Not even by the hour, by the minute you can get weak. We need strength, spiritual strength to endure what is going on around. Because what's going on around sometimes makes you feel so sick. But when we call it that Jesus, he take all that away. He gives us that peace, that pastoral understanding. He embraces us with his loving arms. And say, my child, I'm here. I promise that I will not go anywhere. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Whatever it is that is keeping you back from going all the way for God or with God, leave it at the altar. Leave it at the altar. I remember when, in the week when Minister Foynan sent a song, I said, I have that song to sing. And I heard somebody mention about a song again. You see, when God is moving, you see, when God is moving, when God is moving, I'll give him way to move. We say, when God says, ready, really, you gotta move, you gotta move. Sometimes we sit down and we feel we cannot move, but you see, when God stepped in, not even you, when you know how you get from where you are, not even you. You just find yourself somewhere else where, more than where you are sitting. Not even you. When God, God said you gotta move, you gotta move. When God said that I gotta be up here moderating, I couldn't say anything else because I was just seeing that before I was asked. And when, when, when first lady come and said you're moderating this Sunday, I'm like, okay, I know. I was just having it. I was just seeing me doing the thing. And he wasn't come to me as yet. He hasn't come to me as yet. When she come, God already prepared me for that. So when I started moderating, it was like he was doing it a long time ago. Because God was in it. God was in it. And from then there, you know, he just take control. He just take over. I never know what the minister and they say I'm preaching God's words to people. I never knew. But when God said you ready, you gotta move and anyone can minister the word. Anyone, even the young people. As soon as young people Sunday, don't think that you are too young to minister God's word. God said, I know, tell Jeremiah, I know you before you were formed in your mother's womb. I know you. So don't think that you are too young. I see young children ministering God's word and they touch me so much. So God can use you to do anything. Whether moderating, whether singing, what anything, he can use you. When you're ready to prepare you, you are not going to be surprised of what God's going to use you to do. He said, I call the young because they are strong. The old one cannot go up to some hill where he want to take you. We want to take, so he's going to take you because you're the young ones. So just keep on, let's keep on covering our young people. And I see how they're coming out to young people and they're excited to be young people. And we just only come here to have fun. We go into the world different ways. Because I want them to learn the word. I want them to be strong. I want them when they go out and the enemy comes after them, they can be able to stand. And when they go out, you know the enemy is going to attack them left, right, and all over. We got to keep on covering them. Keep on covering our young people. God can use you. And don't feel that you have to all that he cannot use you anymore. He still can use you. Middle age, he can use you. Any one of us, he can use 
And we say, so God, if you can use anything, you know, you can use me. He can use us. Young people, he can use you. Just be ready. Just be ready. He can prepare that heart and that mind of yours when you're ready to use you. Others are going to be surprised at where he's going to take you. You know, let's continue to pray and ask God to take us through the word. To live a life pleasing unto him. And whatever it is that is in your path, distracting you and wanting to not go on the good soil. Want you to feel that you are choked. Want you to feel that you know, you're just underwater. And you cannot get under. You know, let's get him out of your way. Just get him out of your way. Just get him out of your way. And God can do that. There's nothing that he cannot do. God can do that. Just get them out of your way and walk the path that God wants you to walk. Live the life pleasing unto God because we don't know what, I'm not going to say tomorrow. We don't know what later is going to hold. I'm not even going to go to you tomorrow. We don't know what later is going to hold. Today we are here, today we are gone. But is your heart right with God? Is your heart right with God? He said, those who have ears to hear, let them hear. Have you heard the word? Have you heard the good news? That he's coming back again. And he needs the children to be spotless. He needs his children to be spotless. He said, I'm coming back for church. Spotless. Is your heart right with God? Search yourself. And see if there's any wicked ways in us, Lord. That we can draw closer to you. Draw closer to him. Draw closer to him. So that he can use you to bring someone to him. Because many are out there that need to come into him. Many are out there that feel lost. Just draw us closer to you, Lord. And never let us go. Never let us go. We said, come to our blessing. You know how many blessings we can count? We can't even begin to come to our blessings. The first one is waking us up this morning. The miracle that he walked this morning. He woke us up in our right mind. Come to your blessing. Start counting. You can't stop. He has blessed us over and over and continue to bless us. Be he the good soul today. And if you are not and you know there are things in your life that you need to fix, fix it. Start fixing it. And there is no better time than now to start fixing it. And get your heart right with God. Because on that day, you don't want to hear me part from me. I know you're not. I've been moderating. I've been ministering your word. I've been throwing my ties. I've been playing the music. All these things are going to call upon him to say. But then you'll hear in a sweet voice, depart from me. I know you're not. You know how sad that's going to be? You know how sad that is going to be? Prepare your heart and walk right with God. Don't be stagnant. Don't just make one step forward and ten backwards. Make ten forward and walk with God. Let him hold your hand. Talk with him. Tell him what you want. He's on the main line. His line is never too busy. Never too busy to hear your call. Just continue to trust him. And live the life pleasing unto God. As he prepared to come back for us. We don't know when. But the signs are there. He said these things must come to pass. The signs are there. So we know the time is cutting short. Just prepare your heart and live that life. Serve the Lord with gladness. Serve him with a willing heart. Serve him when trials come. Serve him when things are glad. Serve him when you are happy. Serve him. Don't give up. Don't give up. Just trust in the Lord. Just trust him. Just trust him. And be the good soul. Forget about all the other rest. And see that full of other souls. Forget about those. And just focus on the good soul and try to walk and get there. See, so the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Let him order your steps to that place where he wants us to be. Let him order your steps today. Our God is the possible God. When things are impossible with man, it's possible with God. And you know when it comes. No matter where you are today, if you haven't known Christ as your Lord and Savior, just open up your heart today. Just let him in. Just let him in. He needs to come in. He's knocking at your heart door. He needs to come in and take over. He needs to take control. Just let him in. And let him have your way, have his way in your life. Just let him in. 
I'm going to ask the worship team to sing as you're all on the altar of sacrifice lady. Just let him in today. Don't wait until later. Don't wait until tomorrow. Wherever you are, you may be at your television screen, wherever you are, just kneel before him and ask him to take over. Ask him to come into your life and just take charge. No matter what the situation is, he can fix it. He can fix it today. He can fix it. Is your all on the altar of sacrifice for him? Is your all this morning on this altar of sacrifice laid? Your heart does the spirit control. We can only, we can only be blessed and have peace, peace and sweet rest as you heal in your body and soul. Is our all on the altar this morning? Is our all, if your all is not on the altar, put it at the altar, put it at the cross to him this morning. Because he want to hear you. He want to see you. He want to feel you. He want to know that you are walking with him. And today is the day. Now is the time. Now is the time. Take over, Lord. Just have your way. To come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. And have your way, Lord. Have your way. Tomorrow is not promised. Tomorrow is not promised. So do it now. Do it now. And if you know your road is rocky, if you know you are on a rocky path right now, get on the road. Get on a straight road. It may be narrow, but that road is for you and God right now to walk. That road is for both of you to walk. Get on that road. Get on that glory road. Because heaven is now in you. Do the road be rough and tough. My Jesus is going to carry you through. Get on that road. Get on that road. Call upon him now. Call upon him now as you open up your heart to him. As you open up to him and ask him to come in and to take over. Ask Father forgive me for my sins. Those I know and don't know, Father forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Take over, Lord God. Just forgive me as I try to walk your path, Lord God. As I try to lean on you and not on my own understanding. I'm leaning on your arms, Lord Jesus. I'm leaning on your arms, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I'm leaning on you, Lord Jesus. Not on my own. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, is your all on the altar, hallelujah, hallelujah, come into my heart, ask him to come into your heart and take over, ask him to come into your heart and take over, tomorrow is not promised, tomorrow is not promised, be the fruit, the good one, the good soil, hallelujah, read the word, let it manifest, let there be manifestation of his word in your life, let there be manifestation, hallelujah, things don't happen overnight, it takes time, but continue to lean on God, continue to lean on him, hallelujah, 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 have you will, Lord, have your way, Lord Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, have your way. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
We pray, Lord God, that you continue to bless her. We pray that you will strengthen her. We pray, Lord Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father, as she dispense your word today, Lord God, that you in return, Lord Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father, will refill her with your words once again, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you may take over. Father God, we pray that you build a fence around her, Lord God. We pray that no weapon that form against her shall prosper. We pray, Lord Jesus Christ, that she may not be deceived by every wind of doctrine. She may not be deceived, Lord God Almighty, by the cures of this world, Lord God, or by the attraction, Lord God. But, Lord God, she will keep her eyes in you, Lord God. Bless her and strengthen her in Jesus' name. Father God, we pray for those that are on various platforms this morning, Lord God, this afternoon. We pray, Lord Jesus Christ, that you may strengthen them. We pray, Lord God, that you will, oh God, cover them under your blood, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord God, that wherever they may be at this time, that you touch them with your wounded hands, which was nailed to the cross for them. I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, you walk before them, Lord God, with your wounded feet, Lord God. Oh God, the blood and the water that flow from your structure, Lord God Almighty, Heavenly Father, will preserve them, Lord God. Father God, I pray, Lord God, as we're about to go, that you go with us. We pray, Lord God, that you keep us from all danger, sin, and unseen. Father God, we pray, Lord God, for the sick and afflicted one. We pray for those that who are troubled in every side. We pray that you will take over right now, Lord God. And for those who have not yet accept you as their personal Savior. I pray, Lord God Almighty, that a word will reach their hearts and they will turn their lives over to you, Lord God. Bless them right now, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that through social media land that they will find a place of worship. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. 